Today, I'm going to be talking about an awesome lady in botany, Rose E. Collum. She is most known for being the first botanist employed by the Grand Canyon National Park, where she worked from 1939 till 1954, but that is only one example of the many phenomenal things Rose did in her lifetime. Rose Collum was born in Georgia in 1870. She was trained as a teacher, but began collecting plants near her isolated home in Arizona when she and her husband moved to Gila County. They lived at the site of the Silver Butte Mine in the Massetsal Mountains, miles from anyone else. Needing a way to pass the time, Rose became interested in the plants around her home. She collected plants that she found and grew them along the creek near her home. She was entirely self-taught as she sent away for books and wrote to prominent scientists for information. Through passion and determination, Rose eventually became an authority on Arizona native plants and corresponded with other botanists across the country. She often sent away specimens to help with other scientists' research, and she worked with the botanists Thomas Henry Kearney and Robert Hibbs Peebles on their book, Flowering Plants and Ferns of Arizona. A 1930 article about Rose in the Arizona Producer referred to her as a guardian of the plants and animals that a careless civilization is ruthlessly destroying. Rose was extremely passionate about honoring and preserving Arizona's native plants and landscape. She wasn't afraid to speak out against the harvesting of native species for sale, especially those protected by the Cactus Protective Law. Rose's work for the Grand Canyon National Park was in the form of a grant from the National History Association in order to fund her collection of plants in the area. This funding made her the first botanist employed by the park. And and her specimens became part of the park's herbarium. In a single month in 1939, Rose collected 25 specimens not previously known to grow in the park. Rose was also interested in the idea of progressive adaptation, the idea that plants could adjust to new environments given time. In the case of Rose's experiments, she removed plants from high altitudes, planted them for a time at a middle altitude, and then finally replanted them at a lower altitude to see whether they could thrive. She took plants from five, six, or 7,000 feet and replanted them at 4,000 feet. This tied into Rose's passion for using native plants in gardens. She was the horticulture chairman in the Phoenix Garden Club and participated in the Arizona Federation of Garden Clubs. This included conservation work, like Rose's work on the conservation of Desilurion wheeleri, the desert spoonflower, which is still used in landscaping today. She created the organization Arizona Cactus and Native Flower Society, which later founded the Desert Botanic Garden in 1937. Rose was also very active at state and county fairs, contributing plants, jams, and fruits to competition, and she also ran the first Gila County Fair to much success. Yes. Specimens collected by Rose are found in herbaria across the country, including the U.S. National Herbarium and the Arizona State Herbarium, among many others. Her legacy also lives on in the plants bearing her name. The plant Gila County Live Forever is named after Rose, Dudley A. Colomier, which was named by Dr. J. N. Rose at the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. Rose was a cactus specialist and longtime friend of Rose's. They wrote letters back and forth, and Rose contributed specimens to help with the doctor's research. I've included a link in the description to scans of some of those letters on the Smithsonian Transcription Center website. Rose is inducted into the Arizona Hall of Fame in 2012 in recognition of her work with native plants and her accomplishments at Grand Canyon National Park. Though she collected in many areas, Rose was particularly fond of the Grand Canyon. Possibly you know something of my love for the Big Canyon. It has a strong hold on me. The Grand Canyon is my happy hunting ground, she said in 1939. She was described in articles at the time as tireless, energetic, bright-faced, and persuasive. Rose is just one example of the many pioneering female botanists who made lasting contributions to the field, to collections, and to the landscape. I want to thank Siobhan Leachman, the Smithsonian Transcription Center, and the Grand Canyon Museum for their help with my research on this video. I had a lot of fun learning about Rose and her accomplishments, and I really hope you enjoyed hearing about her. If there's any other botanists you think I should profile in a future video, please let me know in the comments. And for announcements, I wanted to let you all know that Brilliant Botany has a new home page. You can check out brilliantbotany.com for links to the YouTube, to the blog, the shop, as well as a bunch of learning resources. And as I've mentioned, I have a new red bubble shop where you can get things like the t-shirt that I am currently wearing, as well as a bunch of stickers like these ones. If there's any other new designs that you'd like to see in the shop, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.